Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we are going to tackle that uh, 360 head. Um, that you know if you watched the last video or before that, I don't even know when I made it. But if you watched that last one, I did pick up a new old stock head. Uh, not the same casting number as what I got. And uh, I just want to show you guys, if you don't have access to another head, how you can fix it. Uh, now I'm going to put some seats in there. Uh, I have the uh, the head on the seat and guide machine, and I have a cutter, and we're going to cut for uh, uh, the press fit of the seats about five thousandths. Um, after I cut for the seats, I'm going to uh, put some stitching pins in. Now I had talked about putting some L series pins in there on the last video uh, about the cracked head, uh, but I did take quite a bit of material out to put the seat in, and I still have room left for a C series pin. And I'll go over that in the video and show you uh, what's what. Um, but I've got, I'm going to put some pins in, I'm going to put a new seat in, and I'm certain, 100% uh, certain that the, the head is not going to crack any further or, or, or lead to, uh, to water leaks or anything like that. And I'll show you the process, and uh, hopefully by the end of the video we'll uh, torque the head down and move on with the project. But um, if you want to see how this head gets fixed, Instead of throwing it in the garbage, uh, stick around and uh, you'll see what's happening. Okay guys, I got one seat done. Now I gotta move the pilot to the other one. And then we got our air float table. We'll go over there and center up on that one. Uh, we're gonna do that guy next. I think you can still see the crack in there. Right there. So we'll get set up on that one next. Okay guys, got our cutter in there. These are one and three quarter inch seats. The cutter is 1750, the seat is 1755. There's a 5,000 press fit there. We're just gonna go ahead. We've got our stop set so we know the depth. We're just gonna go turn this guy on and have at it. Okay guys, here we are with the seats cut, and in red, I have the crack outlined, and I have the area I'm going to drill to stabilize that crack. Same on both of them. Now, if I was in the seat, like if I was coming into, you know, going right into the seat and stuff, these are L-series pins. Okay, they're, um, they have different thread on them than a C-series. So if you were in a seat and you didn't want to spread the seat or, or spread the crack or anything, you just want to stabilize it, you're going to go with an L-series. And you can see I got tiny ones, I got big ones, I've got all different size of the L-series and the C-series. Uh, now a C-series has like a hooked type of thread. Try and get you in there. Now that's going to that's gonna squeeze that's going to squeeze the crack together, that C-series. Now, I've got, like I say, I've got a lot of different lengths of those. And that's going to go in. That's going to go in on the angle of the head. And it's long enough to not come out the other side, but grab that whole thickness of area there and kind of stabilize and squeeze it together. Now, that will not allow that seat to open up again. Um, and when we put that seat in there and we bond it in there and stuff and, and uh, um, you know, put some sealer on that, um, that that'll be fine. That won't, uh, that crack won't migrate. So if I was in the seat, I'm going to use an L-series pin. I'm just outside of the seat and I'm going to put a C-series pin in there. And like I say, it's got a hook thread and I do all my stitching. Uh, outside of seat areas with the C-series pins. So, um, this is just all 
lock and stitch stuff. Um, the special taps you need and, and the drills are, are not too special, but uh, you do need some special equipment with this. Uh, you can get everything from lock and stitch. Okay guys, I'm drilled, I'm spot faced, and I'm now going in with a special tap. That's a special hook tap that's going to accept the threads of the C-Series pin, and it's going to pull that crack right together. Okay guys, there's the pins in there. On this seat, I put one and then half lapped another one. Uh, a little crack over there that I wanted to stabilize and I think you can still see that one right there I got marked in red. Um, <clears throat> now this area here I think you can see my finger in there that's, that's quite thick comes down on an angle there it's quite thick. Um, so when you're picking your pins uh, I picked a pin that was gonna go almost all the way through uh, now in cast iron when you see a crack uh, there isn't really uh, anything like a, a surface crack in cast iron. When, surf when, when, when cast iron cracks uh, this crack goes all the way through. That's why I've got such a long pin in there. I want to grab as much as that crack as I can because uh, you can't really get a drill in from the other side. So if you're going to do it from one side make sure you use a long enough pin to stabilize the crack. Uh, now I've got to get these um, ground down. Um, seats are in the freezer. We'll put some of our sealer that we put on the threads. We'll put all in the seat area there. We got a 5,000 press fit. Uh, so with the freezer, uh, with them coming out of the freezer, they should bang in there pretty nice. But uh, my next step is to get everything ground down and uh, get everything blended in in the uh, in the chamber right there. Okay guys, making progress. Got the seats in. We've got one seat cut. We've got to cut this seat here. And uh, then we'll be ready to clean this guy up. Uh, get the valves in there and uh, get this guy mounted to the engine. Uh, I feel real good about the, uh, the crack repair. Uh, <clears throat> when I run this engine, any engine that I run, and I got, and I got pins in, I put a, uh, a little bit of bars leak in there. Um, they make some real nice head gasket sealer that I use. I run that for the first time just as a precaution. Um, I don't know if it's actually needed, but I do when I do a lot of crack repair or any crack repair, I do I do run that on the first run just in case there's any uh, little voids or anything or the sealer didn't hold like I thought it might have anything like that. It's not uh, that's not just for uh, you know. Um, cheap garage fixes or anything it, it, it's a useful product so I'll run that on this when I uh, when we fire this guy up but um, happy with the stitching happy with the seats they went in perfect like I say it's a 5000 press fit so they are snug in there they're not going anywhere and uh, we'll get on to cutting that guy and uh, we'll be on our way okay guys we're back on track with this cylinder head uh, here goes the positive valve seals. Just grab a socket that fits. Uh, they go on pretty easy. This is a good upgrade for the 360. This is a good upgrade for, for almost any engine. Um, you know, set of the umbrella seals. Umbrella seals, they're not terrible, but um, this isn't a bad way to go either. It really controls the oil and uh, keeps just a perfect amount of oil there. So we're going to get those put on there, get them on the stand, and uh, we'll be right back with you. Start putting the springs and the valves and everything together. Okay, guys, putting the valves in in the order that I lapped them. A little bit of engine assembly gel, especially on the tip there where it's going to go through the, the seal. It goes through the seal without too much trouble. Um, and this this stuff here, like I said, I've been using the engine assembly gel for a few years now. I do sell this if anybody needs it. Um, the few guys that 
you know are building nice engines they they like the good products uh, I do have this stuff on the shelf if you want to use this instead of that runny um, lube that most companies sell uh, and I'll show you when we put the springs on we're going to use some of the extreme pressure lube that I also sell and um, it's available to anybody that needs it okay guys a little bit of extreme pressure lube on the bottom of the spring there get that going here's your retainer a little bit around the retainer this is going to keep everything from galling or getting messed up. I'm going to do all of these. Now these springs, I already tested the spring rate on all these springs. Uh, that's something you should do. Even when you buy new springs, you should check them. Uh, especially the way the cams are now. They're going to give you, uh, you know, like the comp cam, it tells you where they want you to be for um, spring pressure for startup. And a lot of times if you have the, the double spring, the beehive spring there with another spring on the inside, they want you to take that inner one out during the break-in of the cam. Um, we're not doing that here. Uh, we don't have those kind of springs. But if you do, just read your instructions with the cam because if something goes wrong, they're going to ask you all about that. And you got to have to have the answers for them. And uh, with the amount of cams I see going to hell these days, you got to take every, you know, little bit that you can get to make them last. Uh, we're going to hope for the best on this one. I remember, remember a few videos back how tight it was. Uh, we'll see how it goes on startup. Okay, guys, head's ready to go on. I have a engine tech head gasket here. These guys have this what they call a fire ring around here. Uh, I like it. I like it for a head gasket for rebuilds. Uh, their kit is not as complete as a Felpro kit. I normally like Felpro stuff. Uh, in the AMC engines, I usually get one of each. I get a Felpro and I get an Engine Tech because I like different gaskets out of different kits. But I do like the Engine Tech head gasket. Uh, I'm gonna get. Um, I'm gonna get the head put on here. Remember, there was one dowel in there. And one uh, I had to make because I don't know why the, somebody took those out. They took them out of time and cover. They took them out of the other head. I don't, I don't know. Somebody was in here before. Uh, I'm going to put the head down. I have ARP bolts. And we're going to torque those down in three steps. And I'll show you the process. But right now I'm going to get the head on here. And, uh, and we'll start getting the bolts set up, set up for it. Okay, guys. Get ready to put the ARP head bolts in. This is uh, kit number 114-3602. Uh, I believe that's 70 and up. Uh, 343, 36041, uh, you know, V8 series there. Uh, okay, you're going to get your washers. There's going to be a beveled side that goes toward the head. Your ARP Ultra Torque. Sometimes they give you a bag of it in uh, with the bolts, sometimes they don't. This can's almost done. A little bit, pull your washer down a little bit around the head there. Okay, then bring your washer up. That wants to be that wants to be slippery there, you know. And then um, get your threads real good. You don't put any lube on that side of the washer. And uh, that's all you need. So do that to every bolt, and then we're gonna uh, torque that down in three steps. But um, that's how a bolt is prepared with the ARP uh, fastener assembly. Okay, guys, we're gonna take these ARP bolts down to a hundred foot pounds. Um, I'm just following the sequence in the book there. This is 50. We'll do 50. We might do 75. Then we'll do 100. And um, we'll be back for the final torque in just a second. Okay, guys. Second cylinder head is down. Um, 50, 75, and 100. Uh, final torque is 100 on these. 
if you're using uh, regular bolts, uh, regular Jeep bolts and stuff, uh, uh, I think the torque on those is 105. ARP is uh, the best way to go. Uh, if you guys are putting an engine together, uh, I always recommend the ARP bolts uh, with their uh, fastener lube. Um, we're at the point now, I think we'll... Uh, I've got to get the rockers in. I've got to get the push rods in. That's probably going to be next time. We'll get the rest of our plugs in. We'll get the rest of our back um, uh, water, uh, the coolant uh, plugs there. And um, I've got a couple plugs out of the oil galley still. Uh, and then we'll spin this guy up and uh, make sure that we got a lube going everywhere. We could, without the intake on, we can watch, make sure our hose is good, make sure we're getting oil up to our um, heads here. Uh, so we'll do a quick uh, spin up of oil pressure on this before we paint it and do everything like that and put the intake on and stuff like that. But uh, we're going to end this one here today. And um, thanks for watching, and you'll see how that uh, head repair, valve seats, and, and crack repair goes when we fire this guy up. And uh, hopefully that'll be coming pretty soon. So, thanks for watching everybody, we'll see you on the next one.